Chapter 2. Our Publication some things of grave importance have not been receiving due attention at our offices of publication. Men in responsible positions should have worked up plans whereby our books should be circulated and not lie on the shelves, falling dead from the press. Our people are behind the times and are not following the opening providence of God. Many of our publications have been thrown into the market at so low a figure that the profits are not sufficient to sustain the office and keep good a fund for continual use. And those of our people who have no special burden of the various branches of the work at Battle Creek and Oakland do not become informed in regard to the wants of the cause and the capital required to keep the business moving. They do not understand the liability to losses and the expense every day occurring to such institutions. They seem to think that everything moves off without much care or outlay of means, and therefore they will urge the necessity of the lowest figures on our publications, thus leaving scarcely any margin. And after the prices have been reduced to almost ruinous figures, they manifest but a feeble interest in increasing the sales of the very books on which they have asked such low prices. The object gained, their burden ceases, when they ought to have an earnest interest and a real care to press the sale of the publications, thereby sowing the seeds of truth and bringing means into the offices to invest in other publications. There has been a very great neglect of duty on the part of ministers in not interesting the churches in the localities where they labor in regard to this matter. When once the prices of books are reduced, it is a very difficult matter to get them again upon a paying basis, as men of narrow minds will cry, speculation, not discerning that no one man is benefited, and that God's instrumentalities must not be crippled for want of capital. Books that ought to be widely circulated are lying useless in our offices of publication because there is not interest enough manifested to get them circulated. The press is a power, but if its products fall dead for want of men who will execute plans to widely circulate them, its power is lost. While there has been a quick foresight to discern the necessity of laying out means and facilities to multiply books and tracts, plans to bring back the means invested so as to produce other publications have been neglected. The power of the press, with all its advantages, is in their hands, and they can use it to the very best account, or they can be half asleep and through inaction lose the advantages which they might gain. By judicious calculation, they can extend the light in the sale of books and pamphlets. They can send them into thousands of families that now sit in the darkness of error. Other publishers have regular systems of introducing into the market books of no vital interest. The children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Golden opportunities occur almost daily where the silent messengers of truth might be introduced into families and to individuals, but no advantage is taken of these opportunities by the indolent, thoughtless ones. Living preachers are few. There is only one where there should be a hundred. Many are making a great mistake in not putting their talents to use in seeking to save the souls of their fellow men. Hundreds of men should be engaged in carrying the light all through our cities, villages, and towns. The public mind must be agitated. God says, let light be sent out into all parts of the field. He designs that men shall be channels of light, bearing it to those who are in darkness. Missionaries are wanted everywhere. In all parts of the field, canvassers should be selected not from the floating element in society, not from among men and women who are good for nothing else and have made a success of nothing, but from among those who have good address, tact, keen foresight, and ability. Such are needed to make a success as call porters, canvassers, and agents. Men suited to this work undertake it. 
but some injudicious minister will flatter them that their gift should be employed in the desk instead of simply in the work of the coal porter. Thus, this work is belittled. They are influenced to get a license to preach, and the very ones who might have been trained to make good missionaries to visit families at their homes and talk and pray with them are caught up to make poor ministers. And the field where so much labor is needed and where so much good might be accomplished for the cause is neglected. The efficient call porter as well as the minister should have a sufficient remuneration for his services if his work is faithfully done. If there is one work more important than another, it is that of getting our publications before the public, thus leading them to search the scriptures. Missionary work, introducing our publications into families, conversing and praying with and for them, is a good work and one which will educate men and women to do pastoral labor. Everyone is not fitted for this work. Those of the best talent and ability who will take hold of the work understandingly and systematically and carry it forward with persevering energy are the ones who should be selected. There should be a most thoroughly organized plan, and this should be faithfully carried out. Churches in every place should feel the deepest interest in the tract and missionary work. The volumes of Spirit of Prophecy and also the Testimonies should be introduced into every Sabbath-keeping family, and the brethren should know their value and be urged to read them. It was not the wisest plan to place these books at a low figure and have only one set in a church. They should be in the library of every family and read again and again. Let them be kept where they can be read by many, and let them be worn out in being read by all the neighbors. There should be evening readings in which one should read aloud to those assembled at the winter fireside. There is but little interest manifested to make the most of the light given of God. Much of it is concerning family duties, and instruction is given to meet almost every case and circumstance. Money will be expended for tea, coffee, ribbons, ruffles, and trimmings, and much time and labor spent in preparing the apparel, while the inward work of the heart is neglected. God has caused precious light to be brought out in publications, and these should be owned and read by every family. Parents, your children are in danger of going contrary to the light given of heaven, and you should both purchase and read the books, for they will be a blessing to you and yours. You should lend spirit of prophecy to your neighbors and prevail upon them to buy copies for themselves. Missionaries for God, you should be earnest, active, vigorous workers. Many are going directly contrary to the light which God has given to his people because they do not read the books which contain the light and knowledge in cautions, reproofs, and warnings. The cares of the world, the love of fashion, and the lack of religion have turned the attention from the light God has so graciously given, while books and periodicals containing error are traveling all over the country. Skepticism and infidelity are increasing everywhere. Light so precious coming from the throne of God is hid under a bushel. God will make his people responsible for this neglect. An account must be rendered to him for every ray of light he has let shine upon our pathway, whether it has been improved to our advancement in divine things or rejected because it was more agreeable to follow inclination. We now have great facilities for spreading the truth but our people are not coming up to the privileges given them. They do not in every church see and feel the necessity of using their abilities in saving souls. They do not realize their duty to obtain subscribers for our periodicals, including our health journal, and to introduce our books and pamphlets. Men should be at work who are willing to be taught as to the best way of approaching individuals and families. Their dress should be neat, but not foppish, and their manners such as not to disgust the people. 
There is a great want of true politeness among us as a people. This should be cultivated by all who take hold of the missionary work. Our publishing houses should show marked prosperity. Our people can sustain them if they will show a decided interest to work our publications into the market. But should as little interest be manifested in the year to come as has been shown in the year past, there will be but a small margin to work upon. The wider the circulation of our publications, the greater will be the demand for books that make plain the scriptures of truth. Many are becoming disgusted with the inconsistencies, the errors, and the apostasy of the churches, and with the festivals, fairs, lotteries, and numerous inventions to extort money for church purposes. There are many who are seeking for light in the darkness. If our papers, tracts, and books expressing the truth in plain Bible language could be widely circulated, many would find that they are just what they want. But many of our brethren act as though the people were to come to them or to send to our offices to obtain publications when thousands do not know that they exist. God calls upon his people to act like living men and not to be indolent, sluggish, and indifferent. We must carry the publications to the people and urge them to accept, showing them that they will receive much more than their money's worth. Exalt the value of the books you offer. You cannot regard them too highly. My soul was agonized as I saw the indifference of our people who make so high a profession. I was shown that the blood of souls will be on the garments of very many who now feel at ease and irresponsible for souls that are perishing around them for want of light and knowledge. They have come in contact with them, but have never warned them, never prayed with or for them, and never made earnest efforts to present the truth to them. I was shown that there has been a wonderful negligence on this point. Ministers are not doing one half what they might do to educate the people for whom they labor upon all points of truth and duty. And as a consequence, the people are spiritless and inactive. The stake and scaffold are not appointed for this time to test the people of God, and for this very reason the love of many has waxed cold. When trials arise, Grace is proportioned for the emergency. We must individually consecrate ourselves on the very spot where God said He would meet us.